welcome to the Lockdown Lookup, a daily devotion video series through the fruit of the Spirit. Today we're going to jump into the first on that list, which is love. So let's read Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. One of the things that's interesting in this passage is that one of the ways that we could punctuate that list is instead of putting a comma after love, we could put a semicolon. That is so subtle, but it makes such a big difference. See, if we put a semicolon after love, what that would imply, and I think the text is implying, is that all of the other fruit all of the other characteristics like kindness, patience, goodness are extensions of love. Implying if you have love, then you will have all of these other things as well. Now this would make sense, especially when you read it uh, along with that other classic passage on love, 1 Corinthians 13. So turn there, 1 Corinthians 13, I want to read from verse 4. See if you can spot any similarities. Love is patient and kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. And, and you know the rest of that wonderful passage. Did you pick that up? Love is patient and kind. Hang on. Galatians 5 says that love, patience, and kindness are all fruit of the Spirit. But see... If there's a semicolon after love, it's first in the list, then the rest are extensions. So love is patient. Love is kind. If you have love, you will have patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness, etc. That is, of course, why the Apostle Paul and all through the Bible, such an emphasis is placed on love. Again, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 now says, If I speak in the tongue of men and angels, but have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. So the mark of a Christian? Well, love. The extent to which a Christian is filled with the Spirit? Well, the extent to which they are capable of loving. That's how simple this really is. So then how do we become more loving? Or how do we increase in being filled with the Spirit? To answer that question, I'm going to turn to Colossians 3. So turn there so long. Colossians 3, I'm going to read from verse 12. The answer to that question, how do I become more loving, is really so simple, yet so incredibly important. Let's read. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Such a great passage for wrapping up everything we've been saying. Notice the fruit of the Spirit making an appearance again. They're not just in Galatians 5. Here they are again, patience and kindness. Notice as well the intentionality we should have in pursuing them. This starts off saying, put on as God's chosen ones. In other words, it is something we're supposed to pursue. Notice as well the supremacy of love. Above all these, put on love. It's love semicolon because it binds everything together in perfect harmony. But what I really want you to see was the little word at the beginning, beloved. Put on as God's chosen ones, as God's holy ones, as God's loved ones. See, before you get to the business of loving, you need to know that you are loved. And the extent to which you are capable of loving others will depend on 
the extent to which you have accepted the love that Jesus has for you. So this is really simple then. You want to increase in loving others? Really, it just starts with acknowledging, accepting, reflecting in the love that Jesus has for you. We put on these characteristics as loved ones. And if we do this, if we can grow in our knowledge of how Jesus has loved us in that infinite way, then our loving of others becomes almost supernatural. And that's when we start to reflect this primary characteristic, this distinctive feature of Christians. They will know you are my disciples by the love that you have for each other, Jesus said. So may we grow in love in this time of lockdown. See you tomorrow.